Sanders, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hi, I'm Ben Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder. I'm here with Tom Campbell, our creative director. Hello. Hello. And Jay St. James, who needs no introduction. I guess not. <laughs> There's no Jeez. time for it. There's no time know. for it this week. We gotta bang this shit out. We have <laughs> An extra special guest, yes, we Jeffrey do. Bowyer Chapman. Hello, uh, everybody. Thank mm, you for having me. You're from the Lifetime series Unreal. I am. And also guest judge on the all-new RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 3. This Thursday, yeah. Jeff JBC. Next, Next week. Yes. JBC. We'll JBC. talk about that in a little bit. Back so, on RDR. As you know, we count down every week the top 10 things that make us go, Wow! wow. <laughs> So without, <laughs> oh. so without further ado, number 10. Number 10. It's you, baby. Oh, I will take it. You make us go Tens, wow. tens, tens across the board. We were talking about how to pronounce your name, Jeffrey Boyer. There you go. Chapman. Boyer. Or Bauer. Saying, you, or Bau. You know, no, or, it's, no, no, it's no. not. There's just... It's, it's very confusing. It's B-O-W-Y-E-R. It's my mother's maiden name. I was saying that it's uh, originally from, it's an old English name of uh, uh, archers who used to make bows for archery. A bow-yer, or there's the boyer, or the bow -yer. Well, I'm Tom Campbell, JBC. JBC. because my JBC's family used to just be very campy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very How much. Um, for those of you who don't know, you should know Unreal, which is the breakout, now and it's going about to be in its third season Correct. on Lifetime, mm -hmm. and it's, it's The Bachelor, behind the scenes, a scripted series of what it's really like to make reality television. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair description? That's correct. It's um, uh, based on uh, the the life and times of Sarah Gertrude Shapiro. She's our creator of the show who worked as a field producer on The Bachelor for nine seasons. And this is uh, her experience of working as a you know a very intellectual feminist put in the situation where she has to manip use all of her, 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 her genius ways to ma manipulate these contestants into doing insane zany things for the camera. So it's been a huge hit season three you've just finished shooting is that I right? I just finished shooting season four actually I just got back to LA like three days ago. Wow. Yeah. Two you seasons shoot it back in, to back. in Canada? We shoot in Vancouver. Oh, you're from Canada? Vancouver. I you? am. Yeah. I was born and in raised in Canada. Vancouver? My in mother's from Vancouver my father's from Toronto I'm and I was Toronto. I was raised in between in the prairies <laughs> of Alberta. Oh. Oh. Is there any without <laughs> spoiling is there anything we can look forward to any tease of the upcoming season what starts February 26th or something? Well we have a, uh, a female Sutress this season, so we go from the bachelor to a bachelorette type situation. There's there's 25 hot men on set with oh, us this all is, season. Whoa. This might be James' season. Yeah, I I need to <laughs> check a, out this it's show. It's a very sexy season. Hot My men's. character Jay um, uh, has a, one, possibly two, maybe more love interests this season. Oh, God. We get to go home with him. Do you have like you know how explicit does it get? It's, it's, you know, it's it's risque, but it's lifetime at the end of the day. Show so. us on your body how much we see. <laughs> just, just touch on my body. Just point the parts. We, can just see. We, we, we wear modesty patches on the show. It's, it ain't no oh, HBO. No, but I love that. I, love a, I have sort of a modesty patch uh, fetish. Do you do? I do. I do. I think it's really hot. Are show. you wearing one now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that modest. <laughs> do you have pictures on your phone? Yeah. <laughs> um, now I have to ask, because now you have been on this show that's about the behind the scenes and you stated it very well. You've been behind the scenes now twice at RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. What a dream come true. Are we? Oh. Now, I, when I watch Unreal, I feel a little defensive as a real, as a world of wonder. Right, we don't do that. Exactly. That's right. 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 The manipulation and making people cry and getting them drunk. <laughs> right. We've never gotten you drunk. <laughs> yeah. See, see, yeah. see, see, see. James, yeah. coming to work drunk is a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you do at home and drive yourself into work is not our problem. Right. Um, What's amazing, and I can preview this, is it was such perfect casting because Constant Zimmer, who's mm -hmm. your co-star, is also the guest judge. Yeah. But not only are you on the judges panel, which you were last season, did an amazing yes, job. thank you. You agreed to come on and interact and improv com comedy with the queens. Oh, please, I would have begged to come and on. And the sketch we're calling The Bitchler. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what it's about. Oh, can't. <laughs> it's, um, it's America's first black bitchler. That's right. Wow. Might, might I add. <laughs> we underline that a lot. I don't know how much, you know, we have to cut so much down. Yeah. But I, I, we, we kind of, you know, it came up with some lines and it was just like, I have a secret to tell you. 
I'm black. <laughs> I don't know if I made the cut, but it's don't, here. Yeah, don't tell ABC. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody, but I'm black. But um, it's an improv challenge. The queens, it, we literally. Wait, you, you you actually went on dates with each of the queens? I did. Yeah. So we did. We shot a day of challenges. Um, we did, have you seen The Bachelor before? Do you know the like the structure of the show? I, I've seen the Saturday Night Live version. All right. So it's, it's basically the same thing. So so I uh, I as the Bachelor uh, went on a series of two on one dates with all of the girls, and they tried to woo me and humor me and win well, my heart. Can you whisper into my ear which one of them you would actually date in real life? The best of the best. Uh, <laughs> and that might be the one that you might end up with and I'm just going to put that out there. That. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. yep. It's hilarious. And, and James McGowan, who does our set design, set design mm -hmm. outdid himself. He made the set so big. It looks like the front mm -hmm. of the mansion. We have a limo pulling mm -hmm. up. It's so big, we like almost didn't have enough lights. So like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's an all-star set. James. It's, but, uh, it's yeah. extraordinary. But back to what you were saying before about you know the manipulation of reality show contestants. Yes. I mean, it's so it's so the norm in reality shows, whether it's you know the Big Brothers or the Project Runways or the you know the Bachelor. It is about becoming a caricature of yourself. It is about it is uh, playing it, a role, right? It, absolutely. And any kind of story is a manipulation. Absolutely. Story by definition is is editing of, of, of selecting, putting but a filter on things. Masterclass by Fenton Bailey. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> we are lucky because we we, are. we have the challenges, which is which is like out there. Here's the challenge. Here are the obstacles we're putting you through. But then we cast drag queens yeah. and they bring their own drama mm. and their own persona mm. so we, they're this very the performative thing, as you the, say for, you know being a, a, a super word. fan of drag race uh, the, the the contestants the queens that I've connected to are the ones who have shown like the deepest amounts of authenticity the ones who are truly themselves and don't right. try to produce themselves or, or or become a character of themselves it's really when you get to the core of their vulnerability and their yeah. humanity that's when that's when you strike gold you heard Amen. from JBC, JBC. Yeah. JBC, you're going to stick around because we got more to ask you. I've got a few questions here, but we're going to move on right now to number nine. Number nine. James, what made you go wow this week at number nine? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I've been watching Hulu. I've been reading This is big news if you don't watch. News. All right, I've been, I'm a Hulu I've been fan. a Netflix queen for about a year now, and I finally did, got broke down and got Hulu. And I've been watching this Seth Rogen produced bro dude comedy, this gamer sci fi thing starring Josh Hutcherson called Future Man, okay, which is so not up my alley at all. And yet I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving it to death. It also stars Eliza Coop from Happy Endings, one of your favorite people on the planet. Oh, with the dark oh. hair. Yeah, she she played the, the... No, she's the blonde hair. Oh, oh. oh uh, I'm thinking no. of the bitch. In is, it, is that her last name? Coop? Is it? Eliza, Eli no, it's Eliza something else. She's actually, she's Canadian. She's is she? From, yeah, she's from Is Calgary. it Coupe or Coupe? It's Bowie. All Canadians are named Bowie. No, but this is the thing where I'm saying that you've got to let me just chatter away because it's a very long premise. And we've got right. we've got right. an hour to go here. Okay. So Josh Hutchinson. What? No, I, I'm I, getting the wrap up sign from Blake. <laughs> I, I haven't even started. Oh my god. So th th Josh Hutchinson is this loser janitor who works at this lab that um, is supposed to cure STDs. Okay, that that's the setup. And he's he becomes very good friends with a doctor who has a giant herpes store sore on his lip. And you have to remember <laughs> this. Okay. So he goes home every night and he plays video games at his parents' house where he lives. And he can only get to this certain level. Okay. And every night he can only get to this certain level. And finally one night he breaks through and he gets all the way to the end of the game. And it's this sort of post-apocalyptic post game where he has to save humanity and he saves humanity. And the minute that happens, he starts masturbating to the characters in the game. It's, it's all very Are you sure? I'm totally, I, I wasn't <laughs> high. I swear to God. I might've been on a little Is there Xanax. a modesty <laughs> patch in this show? Well, no, no, because, no, because Just later, wait. yeah, Just you wait. know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, there's oh, a Why do you watch the show? What? Clips. Let's oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Let's yeah. There's a, there's a Josh Hutcherson later oh. he bites a clone of himself naked yeah. and the clone has a huge dick and he's got a little what? penis. It wasn't it's, that little. Well, no, it's nice. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's bite size. Yeah. But um, anyway, so anyway, so the uh, minute he finishes this game. Every time James watches television, it's just a buffet of cocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, where do I find He watches them? good TV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he knows so, where so it's at. at. So the minute he finishes the game, he, the, the, the people that he's fighting with in the game come back from the future and they say that the game is actually from the future and they sent it to this time period to test to see who the person who could save humanity is and this janitor is the person who is the future man who will save humanity so immediately they have 
to take him back in time because the doctor that with the herpes, remember the doctor with yes, the herpes? Do. Yes, yes. Remember, <laughs> he's the the man who unleashes this virus or something like that that destroys humanity. So they have to go back to 1969 when he gets the herpes and cock block him and stop him from from kissing the skank who gives him the herpes. Got it. And that's just the first ten minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hey, have you watched the whole series? Well, I'm I'm like four episodes in, okay. and so I haven't gotten there's a there, there's the big episode where he fights the clone of oh, himself I just, naked. I just ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Which episode is that? But uh, yeah. <laughs> let's <laughs> put the clip on the wow report. Yeah. yeah. It's later in the season. I do remember James, that. I remember everybody flipping yeah, out over James, it, so I had to I don't tune in. Like, What's the saying? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a lot of the critics are saying that it's really um, sort of culturally insensitive to have this bro, bro dude show on this sort of pro bro dude in this moment when we're having this sort of feminist anti bro f- feeling in the country. But of course, Josh Hutcherson has nothing to do with that, and neither do the producers because they probably made it two years ago. Right. You know. So um, it, I, it's. I, I'm a little conflicted about telling people to watch a, this. Right? Are you liking it when I'm you're watching really it? I'm really liking it. Okay. And I'm not a gamer, and I'm not any of that, but so I'm right. really enjoying but this. But is it set in the future or in 1969? It's, it's, it goes back and forth, and then um, it's in the 80s, and then 69. it's in the... Yeah. Mm, but, um, uh, so it was a good year. <laughs> the, the people from the future are really funny because they've never... they All they eat is, like, rat shit in the future, like so they've never tasted pickles, and so, like, they go bananas when they taste a pickle, and they've never <laughs> seen a human baby, and they, like, go around, and they just shoot people and kill them because they don't have any like uh, sure in the future that's all they do is they fight and they kill so it's and, and then josh hutcherson is like uh, this loser but and they real they realize that he doesn't actually have the skills that they thought he did because you know that when they brought it they thought everybody Spoiler was deep alert. Fu- I, so it, it, it's very funny <laughs> and i'm sorry i've rambled and you did it you did it great you can stream <laughs> future man on hulu number eight so at uh, number eight. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was at Sundance last week, right? Right. Yes. And I just saw all these amazing documentaries. I saw a few with you. Right. You did. You saw Three Identical Strangers, because that's what I want to talk about. Oh. It blew. Have you seen it? No, I just watched the, the trailer for what, it. Wait, what is this? I don't know anything tears. about it. Three, it's a documentary. Three Identical Strangers. It's a documentary based on a true story, because it's a documentary. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And there are three identical twins who were separated at birth. Would they be triplets, technically? Triplets, yes. thank yeah. you. He's yeah. saying it wrong. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God. I, he's here with the math for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the terminology. Syntax. Yeah. Thanks, uh, JBC. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, these triplets <laughs> are separated at birth. And then, well, one, one goes of to college. at college, and one of them... One, another kid goes to college, and everywhere he goes, everyone's like, hey, dude, how are you? And he's never met these this people. Which is like in the 80s or the life. 90s. I remember in this in all. It's yes. the most amazing story. Yes. They sort of randomly cute. bump into each other. These two, two of the triplets end up going to the exact same college. And they meet each other, and it's like looking in the mirror. And then they discover there's a third. It goes on the newspaper, and then someone says, wait a minute. Oh, my God, yes. that's me. That's, 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 that's me. me. Yes. Uh-huh. And so they immediately. become the triplets. The triplets. And, in fact, they become a huge media sensation. I they're remember them, yes. People Magazine. They're on David Don Letterman. The Day the, the, the Show. They have a cameo appearance in, in, in Desperately <laughs> Seeking Susan. They show the clip that's of right. Madonna getting out of a car and walking into a building. There's three, like. Were they cute, right? They were 80s. They're like cute, right? 80s, you, fat you, thigh, khakis, Yes, yes. Juvenile. I love a fat yes. uh-huh. <laughs> And they, and they, it, it, all these sorts of similarities. They all smoke Marlboros. They loved Italian food. They liked older women. They liked, yes. And then they opened a steakhouse called what? Triplets. <laughs> yes, of course. So how were they separated at birth? They were all well, put up for adoption. That's I'm adopted. Gets, so right. I'm adopted too. You are. Yeah. And so I have in common. two adopted yeah. kids. Oh. I didn't know this. So yeah. what <laughs> happened was, unbeknownst to them or the adopting parents. They were separated as part of a uh, scientific experiment. Spoiler alert. And that is where it gets written. No, there's so many twists and it's turns. It's true, it's true. That doesn't give much away, but there are so many twists and turns. Wait, as so they, 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 they were like, like, like lab rats? They were guinea pigs? Ex- they were, yes. What was the experience? Yes. They were given up for adoption, and the adoption agency decided as part of an experiment to s- place them in three yes. separate and so homes. And so were they monitored yeah. by yes. scientists and like there were cameras in the home more. that they didn't realize? Not and cameras in their home, but yes. 
And it, Wait, were the parents and kind of a, an Austrian German kind of undertone? Oh, that's crazy. That's yeah, we, are the parents he's a leading uh, psychologist who was a Holocaust refugee, of all things, ends up performing this slightly Nazi style experiment. But wait, yeah. wait, enabled, are, the, are the adopted parents enabled into it? by a, a Jewish adoption? No, they don't know about they it. They had no idea. They found out, right. that they think that the, the fact that they found each other, the triplets, and that it became a media sensation, the experiment shut down. Right. Because they had been found out. And the results of this experiment, the study, have never been published. Huh. And Until like, today, and I have them here on my phone. <laughs> Breaking news. And in fact, they won't be released until 20, was it 2066? Yes. Because um, there's huge fear that what does the study reveal about triplets? There are many dark twists and turns in this. I mean, 2066, that's 100 years after they were born? It, were they born more. They're born in like 60, 61. 61, 105 mm -hmm. years to be precise. They and could still be alive. They could still be kicking it. And well, yeah, there's, some, there's some real tragedy. Eating, eating rat. I mean, what's, yeah. what's interesting is because it's all about the nurture versus nurture, nature versus nurture yeah. debate. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing the film doesn't really take into account, it's a brilliant documentary, but what were the consequences of reuniting them? You know, like that, they'd been separated. Well, I imagine. So that was, but then reuniting them and the media frenzy and all the attention that they got. Well, it's got to fuck you up. Gotta, well, right, and it is very up-fucking, mm -hmm. I suppose. Have you met any of your biological family? No, in fact, I um, uh, I, I don't know that I could. I don't no. know. I'm. Uh, I think that I, it, I'm a little too psychologically. It's intense. Uh, yeah, I've met three of my siblings, um. and I was, was sa saying I was going to keep it to myself, but I've actually just found my biological mother uh, about have a you month ago. Met her yet? I haven't met have her you yet. Been we've been in contact. Mm -hmm. We've been sending each other like dissertation length emails back and forth is once or twice a week. How is it? How it's intense. Know? It's the yeah. whole nature versus nurture thing. It's yeah. like uh, you know, I feel like I'm gaining parts of myself, but at the same time, uh, I have to, uh, I'm stepping outside of myself and seeing myself from a different perspective that I'd never considered before, and but everything that I've considered to be Jeffrey. Isn't there like isms. some sort of churning, like like why would you give me up thing? No. I always say that it would have to be fucking Sophie's choice, yeah. at, in, in, you know, uh, or they had to be eaten by bears or yeah. something in order because otherwise, why would you give this up? Well, well you know. <laughs> you know? Um, like, how dare you? Bear loss is our game. Yeah, I, I can, uh, yeah, I can but see but the I, paths that you go on. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the uh, imagined path of what it had been like had I not been adopted and then my path that I did live and I know that and the path there that are, I did if there are other siblings out desirable. there, well, why were they kept but, and not me? You know, me? but then, like, then I get to see how the life that they had. better not have just been you were short on the rent that month or something. You you couldn't afford me. I mean, it there had better be a really good she, reason. She lost a bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, Three Identical Strangers was purchased right. last week at, at Sundance by uh, Neon. I can't wait to see They're it. They're the people yeah. who distributed I, Tonya. Oh, and, and they did, did they not do um, uh, Ingrid Goes West as well? I love so, it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to roll out. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we've got to take a quick break. You know, today is uh, Groundhog Day. <gasps> mm -hmm. Yes. That's so the question me, yeah. is, the trivia question is, what is the name of the groundhog? Is this too easy? Yeah. The groundhog who comes out of his den in Gobbler's Knob. Um, I just wanted to ask. Bill Murray. Oh, Gobbler's God. Knob. In Gobbler's Knob, <laughs> Pennsylvania. To predict whether winter will end sooner club. or later. Mm -hmm. Do you know the answer to that, James? I do. Oh, okay. That's all right. Let's well, let's, okay. well, let's, that's well, the question. Yeah, 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 oh, we're stuck with it now. Me, I'll give it to you guys. And your question, James, will be, what is his wife's name? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 he's straight all of a sudden. As we go out, will you show your Gucci oh, slippers? Oh, please. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wave it around right now. This is some really good radio, you guys. Can you see no, you can right, also watch the show on the Wow Report, you and, uh, and can oh. you? Oh, wait, wait! Can you, can you take it off and wave it around, maybe? Oh, you go! Oh, yes, beautiful, beautiful, oh. yes. Genuine coyote fur. Don't come after me, Peta. They're not being friendly. <laughs> You're listening and watching the Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. We'll be right back. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Finn Bailey. I'm here with Tom Campbell, James St. James, our millennial producer, Blake. Hi, Blake. Hi. 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 And our very extra special guest, James. Uh, no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm tripping on it. Boyer. Thank you, James Boyer. James Boyer. James uh, Boyer. <laughs> James Boyer Chapman, <laughs> JBC. So, okay, so the, before the break, the question was, what is the name of the, it's Groundhog Day. So what is the name of the groundhog? Go ahead, just give your, give your. Um, 
James St. James. <laughs> <laughs> Andy McDowell. <laughs> no, it's Puxatawney Phil. Okay, James, yeah. what is his wife's name? Uh, Puxatawney Phyllis. <laughs> really? right. oh, was, oh my god! Oh my Seriously? god! That was a guess. That was totally a guess. <laughs> I swear conviction. to God. Oh my oh god. god! That's very funny. All right. Okay. All right. Let's <laughs> thunder on with the top ten things that make us go. Wow. Wow. wow! We've reached number seven, Tom. Number seven. Who watched the Grammys on Sunday? James. <laughs> I, I watched a little bit of it and then I fell asleep. Then I woke up and watched a little bit more and I missed the thing that we're going to talk about. And so I was, uh, but in the next Only day, that's all. If no, no, no. someone would invent something like the <laughs> internet that could <laughs> capture things on film <laughs> and you could replay them. And that's how I watch the Grammys these days. Okay. And clips uh, did you the see next them? Day. I tried to watch it, but the clip had been removed. Oh, you know how you find that? Twitter. Mm. Just search whatever oh. you're looking for and, and look in the video. That's how I watch Drag Race. <laughs> yeah. No, <but> I, <laughs> <laughs> Illegally on Twitter. <laughs> um, well, oh, I, it, it was an amazing, it, it was a fraught Grammys. It was an up and down. And I fell asleep too. It might have been the pizza I ate. I think these award shows kind of <laughs> ebb and flow creatively. Like some, like the, the Grammys were great for a while and they got really bad. And then the American Music Awards took over. And this is kind of a low for Grammys. The ratings were down. Music's in kind of a funny place, not just because I'm an old man, but it's like there's no one that's really Well, who the hell dominating. is this Alessia Cara? I don't know who the hell this person is. She's the one from Havana, right? I know uh, that no, one that, song no, that's that she did Car here, No, that's that not Cardi sang. B. Wait. That, <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's Camilo Cabello. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what, 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 but but the thing the the, the the show was it didn't seem to have a theme. The, the, now because of, of of times up, people were really expecting a strong female presence. It wasn't really there. Very few female artists performed. Laura didn't perform or didn't win. Didn't mm -hmm. win. And was they not had happy Sting do it. like uh, a song by himself. It was like a little out of touch. Right. I did love Sting. Miley with Elton. Um, He's got an album coming out with Shaggy, which is why he was in the subway with Shaggy. I know, but then he did like a, an Englishman in New York, and it's like why. I know. Right. What about it just Patty there's so much music. So, <laughs> but what I really love, love you to is to talk about Patty Lapone. They had um, Ben oh. Platt doing somewhere, which was really lovely. They, they, this is their salute to Broadway. Again, they they, they cover an incredible so expanse of they music. Do. That is the one thing about the Grammys that I love. And then, as, as a tribute to Andrew Lloyd Webber, they had Patty Lapone show up on a lift Holy that looked like fuck. the statue. She is, I don't know, 60-something. 60 68, I think. And she sang, Don't cry for me, Argentina. And it was a voice. It, she can still sing. I just saw her in that no, Wonder War paint. She still hit every single every note, note she did in 1980. I, you know, when she, then, when she performed in the 1980 Tony Awards, yes. okay, that was like the defining moment of my childhood. That was like when I, it solidified every gay thought I'd ever had. And it was like it just was one of the most, such a powerful thing. I went to New York that summer and saw her in Evita, and mm. it, literally I sobbed when you sent me that. I all through this thing, I just like my lost childhood. Everything it was just like I, I sobbed the entire time she sang. It was so powerful and amazing. And I watched on the edge of my seat, but the moment that got me, you know, because I do want to feel, you want to get like kicked in the stomach feeling, is at the end, it's like, have I said too much? There's nothing more I can think of to say to you. All you have to do is look at me to know that every word is, is true. true. And then, bum, 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 mm -hmm. she puts out one arm, bum, 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 then she puts another arm, bum, 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 She bum, knows bum, how to work bum. it. And then she raises both of her hands, dun, 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 dun. And, the and she's a The there. hands Jeez. are up. Because remember, Madonna, well, you was, get it? Madonna you was a one hand up. Evita, remember that? Right, I well, do. And yeah. Evita, yeah. Patty LaBone was a two hand up Evita. It's two arms for the people. But it's worth seeing that for that. Go, go I, find it. I saw a little clip and what? what? Julie Covington is the original Evita. Oh, for she sang the original with such poignancy that is a quality in the way she sings it. <laughs> Patty LaBone, it's just trionic. It's too showy, it's too shouty. It's, 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 you guys, I, wait a minute. I don't, you don't, I don't, I don't like all that showboating on Broadway. Hold on, you don't think Ava oh, Perone was showboating? Oh, and we it? have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> James, what do you got number six? Number six. He wants I, I, to, I, I, I want to talk about Patty Lapone. No, no, number six is Patty Lapone versus <laughs> Julie Coventry. <laughs> Julie Covington. Love her to I don't time. know who this Julie Covington. Well, then you missed it. You missed the most incredible performance. Anywho, number six. <laughs> number six. Um, uh, the assassination of Gianni Versace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Ryan Murphy's uh, uh, season two of American Crime or season three? Correct. Season two. two. Season two. Yeah. And it tells the story of Andrew Cunanan, the spree killer who went on the, the murder spree that ended 
in the killing of fashion icon Gianni Versace in South Beach. And um, it's uh, it stars Darren Chris as Andrew Kananen. Uh, it's also got Ricky Martin in a white speedo yes. for the entire time. That's all you need. That's all you need. It's also got Penelope Cruz as this sort of alternate dimension version of Donatella, where Donatella is this beautiful, she's stunning. amazing. Uh, yeah, and she's talking like she's this. So uh, amazing. She's yeah. got, um, and the Lithium. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's very. Um, it's it's an. Inter- Judith Light was in uh, last night's episode. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If, doing what? Uh, she was one <laughs> of the murder victims of of one of the oh, other people. Oh. So she's had sort of a, a cameo and she was delightful as, mm. as usual um it's all very ryan murphy it's a jumble of jump cuts and it goes back and forth in time and you always get the feeling with ryan murphy that he just sort of is oh i'm I, oh, no no oh. i'm listening That's funny. okay uh, <laughs> this <laughs> makes me look thinner <laughs> <laughs> where he's just shouting out no- notes to an assistant who's like writing them down on a speakerphone from his car yeah, exactly yeah. and he's like and then, and then we're gonna go to 1950 and then we're gonna have a, you know and then it's gonna 92 and then it's gonna be 96 and then we'll do it go back and forth and like you j- then they just sort of submit that and do that yeah you know, there's it's not a lot of thought that goes on. Is in there this. any sort of homoerotic other than the Ricky Martin and the white speedo? Well, yeah, I mean, Darren there's lots Chris. of gay bar yeah, scenes. Yeah, and, as a, you I know, mean, is it hot? I mean, yeah, did you? Well, Ryan you Murphy, as we know, has a type. Jerking off to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and Darren Chris <laughs> exemplifies this type. And straight boys playing gay. Straight seems boys to be playing gay. Uh, pretty boys, is, they're usually like blue eyed mm-hmm. brunettes mm-hmm. Uh, with boyish bodies. Mm-hmm. And Matt Bomer type. Yeah, yes. Matt Bomer. Max uh, Greenfield, who's yes. also in the Johnny uh, Versace. Sh- Cheyenne Jackson, yeah. Yeah. Cheyenne. West Bentley. Yeah. You know, he, he, he definitely, and, and it, it's really, he, Darren Chris is in a red Speedo. We, like, we were talking about this before, the mm-hmm. bulge, and the, and then he <laughs> takes it out, and then he's like, got the butt shots galore, and that's like the first 10 minutes. Like, literally, the first 10 minutes is nothing but Ricky Martin in a white Speedo. You are three Speedo minutes into do. this story, and you're just telling me about the butt now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. But. You got to but. Do you, do, you, do you like it, or how are you feeling about it? Did you watch the first season? I, I didn't watch the first season, okay. uh, but I, I know I, I know the, Ryan Murphy's But o, it was OJ was the, the first season. The first season was OJ, and I connected to it, it on a much deeper level because I feel like it was much more accurate with the actual timeline of events that occurred, and I feel like they uh, took a lot of artistic license on this one. Well, they took, they took but liberties. But not enough, because there's not enough Versace fashion in this to make it, like... Uh, that happens every time we do I a know, show. we yeah. have a man outside who always yanks a chain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not chains. It's a very sexy show. It's a very sexy show. But you I, you feel like they got, like, ten items from Versace, like, on a thrift store or something like that, and they just use them over and over they again. They talk about how Versace didn't provide yeah, the clothes. Yeah, exactly. But so, in, uh, clothing in, isn't copyright. You can't protect... They could have created all the clothes they wanted. They supposedly thrift shopped and bought. And, and, and you can tell. You really can. Mm-hmm. And the thing mm-hmm. is, too, that, that Ryan Murphy's idea of what 19... 1991 was like it's more like Miami Vice mid 80s like sort of there's like it's Ar- Armani early 80s American Gigolo like right. like he didn't quite have the the time right. period right it's a little disconcerting because I remember and I rem- it's weird because I remember that nobody really there was that moment where everyone the Wendy and Christie were all in the cat suits yeah. remember that and, the, and everything but nobody really wore Versace so it's very strange that to see everyone wearing Versace. And were you living in Miami at the time? I, I was. It I could was, have been wow. you. I, you could have been the killer. Yeah, I, I could have been. <laughs> um, but it, it also was bringing up all sorts of things to me last night. What did I just Don't do? Don't say it. My spray mouth? it. Oh, my it's God. Right. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, well, it's flu but, season. <laughs> well, you can cut all this out, but I was thinking about the Mark Sawling uh, you know how Mark Sawling killed himself yesterday, oh, that's this such week. A, that's it's such a horrible tragic. story. It's horrible. It's really and sad. Yeah. I, I kept thinking of all these parallels. You know, there are people, people on the internet saying, you know, that a, a monster always comes from a monstrous place, and no matter how fucked up you are, somebody fucked you, you up right. just as bad. And somebody must have really fucked up Mark Sawling, and we don't know that. And we do know the the um, Andrew Cunanan story, but it, he was also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so this show stops being uh, the assassination of Gianni Versace. Stops being about Versace and Donatella. And it just it, in the later episodes, it just concentrates on Andrew Cunanan and, and the sort of unspooling and, and the other murders and mm. everything. And Versace and Donatella just make sort of cameos. And Donatella episodes. is the reason to watch the show. She though. Is. Penelope Cruz is slaying it. <laughs> yeah, with that accent and that blonde wig. <laughs> yeah, and those, and the, oh, the, the, the black leather. She was with gorgeous. The, 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 yeah. the sunglasses at night. <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> don't make me sing it. But apparently, like we lose that, and it just really becomes the Derek, no. the assassin story. Right. And so, um, well, maybe, maybe it'll become more, uh, you know, in line with the actual uh, series of events, though, if they have well, that, that, court yeah, is, apparently each or footage, episode or... is another murder that happens, okay. and so you go Sounds back and you great. find. Great, <laughs> very uplifting. <laughs> Tune into the assassination of Gianni Versace every Wednesday, 10 p.m. on FX. Or catch up anytime on the FX app. So, okay, number five. Number five. In keeping with the Versace-esque aesthetic of sort of gaudy, this is a doc I saw on Netflix. Treasures from the Wreck of the Unbelievable. Okay, okay. How? No, no, I mean, see, I saw that, but I was, I did, thought I wasn't allowed to watch it because I wasn't allowed to do any Netflix. So you're oh, now nice. James St. James. You were banned. <laughs> I, you no, were on a Hulu kick, but like yeah, no well, Netflix for you. To be James St. James. All right. So it's a harm reduction program. So Sif Amatan II was a second-century collector, and his entire collection of art sank in the Indian Ocean sometime in the second century. And a salvage company found all this stuff. And they, they, Damien Hirst stepped in to help them bring it all up to the surface. Who's Damien Hirst? Who's, who's Damien Hirst? He under Damien Hirst is the artist. One of the most famous artists of. Uh, he's one of the sort of. Um, the the Brit Pack. The, me, the, the Brit Pack. Cool yeah. Britannia. He is. He's the guy who put the shark in the formaldehyde tank. He did all the pills. He's oh, the guy who did the pills. The diamond encrusted he's, skull. He's the diamond I represent the unsmart No, no, you're people. right to point it out. You're not. No, you're not. So, <laughs> but wait a minute. Hold so, on, chance. So, it's a very wait, quiet wait, wait, taste. So in they found in this in this in this hall of treasures that they, they brought up from the ocean bed. They, there was 189 pieces, bronze, marble, malachite, rock crystal. So of I mean, Indian an art. amazing hall. Like gold? No, he was, like, he was a, an, a classical person. Oh, I don't know okay. where. And he had a huge collection, it's, and he was moving it. Do we know anything about this gentleman? There was the a mythic shield, hold on, of Achilles. Well, I'm, I'm there was a skull out. of a unicorn. There was a Greek goddess with the head of a fly. Mm. There was an ancient Egyptian red marble deity bust of Rihanna. <laughs> There's now, a but wait, 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 but hold on, wait. that looks like Pharrell. There was a small statuette that is Optimus Prime, mm. and there was a sword emblazoned with the SeaWorld logo. Mm. But the minute Damien right. Hurst steps in, exactly. don't you think, like, why is Damien Hurst here? What is going here? on? Exactly. Yes. So I was watching so, it at home last yeah. night with my boyfriend, and we're like 10 minutes into it, and he's like, something's fishy here. Is this like yeah. a real documentary? Fishy. Is this a movie? Something's yes. fishy here. It's an underwater and I got adventure. So, I got so irate. I was like, what do you mean? This is, this is a real documentary. Okay. Look, at, look at the pieces. It's a hoax. It's The a whole hoax. documentary is a hoax. And here's the thing. Not only did... Damien Hirst really did underwrite the uh, expedition to recover the works, but he also made the work. Put all the work on the bottom of the ocean, and he also made all the work. And he's been doing this for ten years. It's cost him sixty-five million dollars. And once they hauled all this shit up, they put it on display in Venice. They did a show in Venice. So vast was the show, they needed two places. And one of the places was the Palazzo Grassi, which is a private museum, happens to be operated by the French billionaire. Francois Pinot, who owns Gucci, who owns Stella McCartney, and who's married to uh, well, his son is married to Salma Hayek. Yes. Oh, so oh I've sat you. behind them at Hamilton, so, so I know them very well. <laughs> 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 so you can go to this exhibition, and you can buy three kinds of work. You can buy a coral edition, which is one mm -hmm. of the encrusted artifacts recovered from the ocean bed. Mm -hmm. You can buy a treasure, which is a restored artifact, or you can buy a copy. And if you bought the whole load of stuff, it would be a billion, billion dollars. It's a billion dollars. Well, how much have you bought so far? He's, well, he sold three hundred million dollars. Did you watch so this documentary? Yes, I watched all the from beginning to end. I was fascinated. Okay. I, mean, I knew a little bit about it, but it's and it's made by a reputable documentary company called it's, Oxford Films. It's beautifully shot. Oh my about god! About half an hour into no it, though, expense, once I realized that it was all was a ruse, going on. I couldn't. I just couldn't. So it's not being catfished. It's being dock fished. <laughs> dock fished. Like what? <laughs> What? Something, I, 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 something fishy. So the unraveling mm. is the story, or what's? The, I don't understand I, it's exactly. So, to me, it's so fast. To me, it's very romantic because this whole idea of taking a work of art, dumping it at the bottom of the ocean for ten years, bringing it back up, and not just an exhibition, but an exhibition with this story. And sure, it's fake, but I actually think it's kind of brilliant. And I love the fact, and I think this is a part of Damien Hirst's motivation, is to enrage critics and provoke people. Well, he's and very they are like he's, he's, he's this generation, he's it's a Warhol, it's, it's, it's all I get it. yeah. Yeah, meta. It, and you so, are a huge Damien Hirst fan I'm anyway. I'm afraid so. Last yes. question. When people went to the exhibit in Venice, did they know it was fake? Yes. Okay. They knew. How long ago was the, was the exhibit? It was last year. year. Oh, yeah. Right. Spring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, he has, you know, he, the, the Diamond Pascal was $100 million. Right. Um, and then he, then he decided to auction his work directly at auction rather than go through a gallery. He did it himself, $200 million. And he said, you know, as an artist, you make work with what's around you, and what's around him is money. And the mm. irony is the more he tries to mm. spend and get rid of it, the more comes to him. Same so. story here. Right. Yeah. 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 Every time I go to Whole Foods, I come yeah. out richer. <laughs> okay, so that's on Netflix. <laughs> We have to take a quick break. Um, still, It's still Groundhog Day, in case you didn't know. Oh, yeah. The legend goes, here's our question, that on February 2nd, if, what's, how do you say his name? Uh, Pucks to Tawny Phil. Pucks, Pucks. Sees his shadow, meaning it's a sunny day, there'll be six more weeks of winter. How many percent of the time has something Phil picked correctly, right? Oh, how uh, much of a time has it been correct? Like a percentage we're looking for? Well, percentage, I mean, yeah. I, okay. percentage, yeah. This is the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton uh, here with Tom and James and Blake and JBC. What's up? Mm. <laughs> so, okay, that so. That voice is just so much. Jim Lewis. Boy, it's you're just, a chap. Could you just yeah. talk? I just know. Talk unreal. Like, just. <laughs> You know, I just did this. I I, I just did this um, uh, this podcast for the New York Times called Modern Love, where you have to sit in a studio oh, yes. and read a, a letter, story. a love letter. Yes. I loved it so much. I would like I could make a full career out of reading audiobooks, was just sitting your, in a studio. Was it your love letter? I would I would actually buy letter. audiobooks from you. Would that, you? Yeah, I would. Right. Too, I think yeah. it's all. I think it's I think, all. I think I'm onto something. Yeah, I'm really cheap. Can I just call you and you? Yeah, by all means, I'll leave you voicemails. I'll leave you voicemails. Some of those modern loves really make me cry. I mean, they don't always have happy endings did yours have a mine did yeah oh, that's yeah good. i won't give it away okay. it'll come out in the next couple weeks okay so before the break the question was um that groundhog thing that comes Pucks out to tiny phil thank you thank you. i just can't say it uh-huh. how many uh, what percentage of the time has he been right about how much longer winter oh i would say a good 98 percent of the time i mean he's just he's that's he really knows what he's doing science. he's been doing it a long time yes, you learn. Uh, yes. I-, I was gonna guess somewhere in the 70s like 76 percent. right I'm going to say, because it's bullshit, <laughs> <laughs> it's 50% of the time. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay, I'll go 35%. 35%, because he's... What is it? Blakey. 39. Oh! 39%. No. That's you win right. the Price is Right I believe challenge. that's a failing grade. <laughs> yeah, I believe that 39 is like around Trump's popularity. <laughs> 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 And I win absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, counting down, we've reached number four. Number four. Who here has seen Citizen Rose, the documentary series on E! about Rose McGowan? I am a huge fan, and I am. I'm, I'm just. I, I love what she's doing, and she's she's fascinating to me. I have not watched it. I was about to last night, and then I fell asleep. That's fine. Uh, no, I haven't, but I'm very excited to hear all about it's it. It's a hard thing to watch. It's she's an amazing but person. She's a, she, right. Yes. Uh-huh. She is Joan right. of Arc. Yeah. Uh-huh. She, you know, in the appearance with the short hair, she's funny. She's quirky. She's reliable, but she also seems incredibly self-obsessed. And that's not a criticism. That's just observation. And and it's shop. It's Buna Murray did it. They've gone. Out, you know, Amy Intercasso Davis, who's our dear friend, mm-hmm. who's the head of programming at E now. You know, they're talking about a new day at, at E and doing things more docu and whatever. And this is very different. A lot of it feels very self shot. She's like in the corner of a shower talking. And this first episode, there's going to be five altogether, was shot like in October, November, December. So like. Just a little while ago, right. which I kind of appreciate that quick turnaround. Fresh. I read something about Citizen Rose saying that had she just been the subject, it would have been far more palatable ha- as opposed to the reality of the, of the series, which was her being the subject, the producer, the writer, the narrator, the, the narrator. director. It was, it was a lot. It she's became, doing too uh, much. Yeah. It, 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 it was a lot. And, and she, 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 she is, is intense. She's the type of person. She's a very A type of person mm-hmm. who's going to be yeah. the producer. She's intense. Right. Her, her energy can be quite abrasive at times. Yes. But, you know, uh, th- that's what this situation calls for. We don't yeah. need somebody who's going to sit back and be polite. Right, exactly. She, she's the perfect person for this yes. role mm. at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Because radical people that make a difference are not easy to take. No, no, no. Right. They, and that, that is mean, the point. Like, like Gloria you, Orred for years was yes. mocked as a sort of, you know, fringy nutcase. Who wrote right? right? the normal heart? Um, Larry Kramer. Larry Kramer, another person that, that that broke through in a time of crisis, not in a polite way, not mm-hmm. in a, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, the people that changed. She's got our attention. Yes. Yeah. And so everyone should 
watch it. It's not easy. I couldn't turn away. It's stuck with me since I've watched it. Oh, wow. Because um, that's not what you, you expect of E! Yes. Entertainment. And I don't know, like, part of me is being a commercial producer thinking, mm. is this going to rate? Is this going to, are people, you know, are people going to come I and watch this? I think it's incredibly shrewd, given exactly where we are. It's, well, right? it's important to, it's an important story to t tell. And so bravo a, for them for doing it. It's a perfect, like, it, uh, historical artifact that in 50 years you can look back yes. on and point to what was going on and say, watch this and you'll get it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think it'll stand the test of time because, like Larry Kramer and, yeah. and those things, the, the, these abrasive personalities they are better historically in your rearview mirror than they yeah. are actually being at a party there with them or being with them one chilling moment there's many where she has um amber tamblin yeah comes to her and they have a sort of it's a reality scene but they're talking about real stuff and amber's praising her and how brave she is and when they're leaving she pushes her close and whispers she goes if i die Like there's this intense because she's concerned. She's convinced that people are trying I to kill her, mm -hmm. and she's like, you know, paranoid. And you think, oh, you're crazy. You're paranoid. She spent 20 years being followed by the assault. Like, yeah. Like when you see her press blitz, when you see her on the View or on Good Morning America or wherever, she's very intense. But you, you know, the 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 level of um of a truth that she's telling, it wouldn't be surprising it's if people were. Yeah, yeah. You know, I believe it. Anyway. Tracking her. Wow, that's uh, E running repeats actually right now of the two hour premiere of Citizen Rose. There's four additional episodes coming up coming in the spring. In the spring. Yeah. yeah. Number three. James, what have you got for us at number well, three? Well, I'm just switching tracks completely Good, that's, right there. That's what, we're yeah. a little bit country, we're a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> right, yeah, from, from really intense to like just pure fluff here. Good. Um, uh, Oddity Central had a story. Um, this is <laughs> right up. The source <laughs> was <laughs> Oddity <laughs> Central, <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> this is right up your alley, though, Fenton. There's a Japanese inn in uh, the resort town of Hakone, which is famous for its view of Mount Fuji. And this inn... Uh, I love it already. Wait, Ryan Murphy... Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Ryan Murphy at this inn? Hold He's on. everywhere. He is everywhere. Um, they've, par they've, uh, um, they, they've partnered with Nissan to create these self-driving smart slippers. Okay? <laughs> now, you know that in Stop. Japan... No, I swear to God, I swear to God. In Japan, you know, it's obligatory when you go into a dwelling that you take off your shoes and you put on a pair of slippers. Yes. Right. So they have these slippers that – um uh, that – uh, they are in the lobby, and you put them on, and then when you're done with the slippers, they drive themselves back to the lobby, and they self-park themselves. They they parallel park right, right where they were. So you have to take them off. You, yeah, you, you yeah. can't drive. They don't drive around. when you're on them. No, no, it's no, not no, like no. a segue. Uh, no, no, no. But the minute you you take them off, they sprout these little wheels, and they've got four cameras in them to let them know where they are. And there's this video. We'll put it on the wall report because it's yeah. just absolutely fascinating. Where you see all the, like this, <laughs> this hallway with all these slippers driving back, and then <laughs> they have terrifying. like. Parallel parking technology. How do you summon them? Um, well, no, they, no, they're they're right there. But it says they. Have oh, you have to walk over to the slippers to put them on. Yeah, you put the slippers on. Oh, and they don't come to you. Fenton oh, so hates the story. Oh, now. Yeah, so what? Come on, I thought fail. you would. No. Like, can I give you one? They're word? fucking slippers. I, they're smart <laughs> slippers. Like, what do you want? A conversation can with them? Can I mm. give you a one-word reaction to that story? Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Wait, but, uh, the, uh, the inn also has cushions that put themselves in, in tables that rearrange themselves after you've gone. The, oh, uh, well, now. I, I hate out. this. I hate all every bit oh. of this. Wait, I, do like this I, like I don't it. use that word strongly. I can't imagine I like having, it, James. really having all these inanimate objects all of a sudden become... I love the idea of someone making my bed. Really? Exactly. Yeah, cameras and uh, oh, all up but in my house. But we're living in a no, surveillance life already. I mean, I Alexa's like watching you. you know. I hate yeah. cameras. I, I don't want <laughs> anything to do with <laughs> that. <laughs> At any rate, smart slippers coming <laughs> to so uh, Boogie. Well, there you they go. There they go. I do. Wear wear I totally wear. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep I could, you don't know how filthy my apartment is. If everything could clean itself okay. and like put itself away I guess afterwards. That's footloose, When's right? your birthday? Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say. What? When's your birthday? August first. Okay. Oh, you're a Leo. Well, I, I think time were... between now and right. then to, oh, okay. to get a pair of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'll, remember. I'll remember. I thought you were gonna tell us a story about a painting pig. Well, Picasso. Okay, moving on. So one subject per segment. No, Picasso. Picasso. Come on, Picasso. The painting oh, pig. We'll hear about him next <laughs> week. <laughs> He's pretty good. Number two. Well, there's no segue here either, because at number two, I picked Jane Fonda in five acts. 
Mm-hmm. What's that? It just feels inappropriate somehow. Did you um, watch it at Sundance? I watched it at Sundance. Yeah, we this saw is it the together. We sat we next did. to each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tom is very sensitive about people who sit next to him in the movie theater, and I was getting all. <laughs> Wait, you mean that time when we went to go see that French zombie movie, and I was whispering to you, you were like getting mad? No, I love whispering. I was feeling he was, he was not enjoying it. Oh, okay. He was growing mm-hmm. restless. It was a very late screening, it in was. fairness. Yes. And I just felt like I was trying to like I, I'm I'm like codependent through silence, like. <laughs> So well, and you're also a, a Jane Fonda super fan. I, I kind of as was I, as as am I. But his <gasps> was oh, was say, was. Say, say your fun. I was fond of Jane. Until <laughs> oh. <I came>. <laughs> <laughs> wow! How long All did right. you plan that so one? It's been a lot of work. <laughs> so, here's the here's the real pet peeve for me with this film is it in five acts and films that have numbered sections. It's like death because you get oh. through one and you're, then you're number three and you're like, holy oh, okay. okay. And it was a late late screening. We were right. up to like midnight. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> she is up so until midnight. Late. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Me. Me, too. me too. How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> she is so beautiful. Yes. I mean, I, I forget how old she is. Significant. 82. 82. Yeah, I significant. Think. Stunningly beautiful, beautiful voice, very uh, sort of just classy, an agile alert. There's, there's something about it that's completely irresistible. And this, I feel, explains not Jane to my Fonda's dad. Oh, my dad hates her because I think Hanoi, hey, Jane. she has such charisma, you cannot resist it. And whether she's being an activist or doing uh, home video exercises, whatever it is she decides to do, she's just radiant. Except in this documentary, because she talks about herself so frankly and candidly and extensively that as a point at which you're like enough you know she just it's another one like the rose thing in a different way but yeah. it's like there's so much jane talking about jane yeah that jane it gets a jane. little bit in your well, face you and and uh, whatever. No, no, no. I t- tell me tell me no but i just I, and i do think that as in terms of she is the she is like baby uh, Baby boom generation number one. Um, well, okay. see, everything she's done, everything she's pursued, mm-hmm. whether it's sexual revolution, whether it's politics, whether it was anti-Vietnam, whether it was fitness, whether it's affluenza with Ted Turner, and now you know even like this living your life great at eighty, she does all. She's she's, she's very prescient, isn't she? Yes. She's sort of really in tune with the zeitgeist. But there is a whole generation that will never forgive her for Hanoi Jane. Yes. Ever, and ever, she, ever, And she ever. spends a good deal of this she documentary yeah. apologizing yeah. about that, it. That's what I'm saying. Again. Like, like it, the, the southern half of my family, I mean, and will never, The footage ever. is very damning. They show it in slow motion. Right. And it's her sitting down with the enemy, laughing, sitting in a bomber, having their helmet on. And she explains what was going on. She also says, this is there were some revelations yeah. that she basically was anorexic, bulimic, and high on dexedrine all through the Vietnam War. So, And she goes, I don't even know how people were receiving what I was giving, and they cut to her like, blah, 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 you know, talking. It's like, oh, that makes that sense. Makes sense. Right. That makes yeah. sense. Uh-huh. <laughs> Been there. I mean, it's weird with distance. I think she is an incredibly important figure, oh, actually. Yes. And the fascinating reveal was that uh, you thought she became a multi zillionaire off her home video. But uh, one is that she basically invented the home video business, mm. number one. With the and number two, tips. all the money went to Tom Hayden and his causes. They created that business. Really? They were like, yeah. let's come up with a business that will feed our li- liberal causes. Yeah. And, the, and they thought, a restaurant? No. Wow. Fitness tips. Was that why That's she married billionaire? No, she says that, and there's, there's, there's her book, my friend Greg, I told him about the documentary, yeah. says that her book that she wrote 10 years ago is even more revealing oh. because she, supposedly she broke up with, Tom Hayden left her. Yeah. They, they had grown apart, but he left her, and then Ted Turner called, and she goes, I'm a wreck. Call me in six months, and to that day, he called me. And, you know, six months later, and she goes, in the first date, she knew. And, and every time she meets a man, all the men in her life, it's always like, he touched me. And it's like electricity yeah. went through my body. Like, I think she said right. some good sex. I think so too. Um, <laughs> but I just want to break down. The first chapter, because it's Jane Fonda in five acts. Mm-hmm. First act is Henry, her father. Her father. Okay. Second, stop when you get this. So when you get the p- pattern. Um, second act is Vadim. Mm. So third act is Tom Hayden. Mm. Fourth act is Ted Turner. What's the fifth act? Mm. Myself. Jane! Yeah. Someone tell me, when is it my turn? Don't I get a dream for myself? Scrapbook full of me in the background. Young. And it includes a visit to the mother's grave. Yes. Because her mother, she had this conflicted relationship, and mother killed herself. It's very sad. But she goes to the mother's grave, and it's a... She is really it a Madonna moment where she's rolling around on frankly, it? Frankly, yes. I'm I mean, pushing she, the snow. She brushes the, yes, brushes the, the snow. Where, where is she buried? In, in New York? 
No, I, I think somewhere in the Midwest or something. Somewhere. But it, this is just a note to all documentarians, a note to ourselves. Mm. Also in the Rose McGowan documentary, she visits her father's grave. I think we need to stop uh, visiting right. graves. Okay. I was going to say enough. maybe that should be like the new maybe intro. Maybe a new show. Yeah. You said people <laughs> visiting graves. Somebody's visiting graves. <laughs> Rolling on my World of Wonder grave. produced <laughs> Tom <laughs> Campbell, directed, starring Milk and Fifi O'Hare. <laughs> Drag queens on a grave. Uh, yeah. Drag queens rolling on graves. <laughs> I love it. I would turn into that. Okay, we have to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll reveal the resistor of the week and the number one thing that made us go wow, wow. No. the most. Wow. <laughs> the wowiest. <laughs> the wowiest thing of the week. So Wow Reporter Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report here on Radio Andy. And we've been counting down the top ten things that make us go wow. wow. There's a, wow. La- a lady in the window adjusting her bra. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. So <laughs> we've reached the number one. Time for the big reveal. What is the number one thing? Number one. In a week f- filled with political strife. Stormy week. A stormy week. A stormy week. Storm- the state of oh, the oh. union. Uh, I think the most important story is the D I V O R C E of Donald and Melania. It's coming. Divorce? It's Pending. coming. Well, hold on. I don't know if you read this, but last night she took the first time in yes. history a uh, first lady took a separate motorcade to the uh, State of the Union yeah. speech. It is separate motorcade. Yeah. I mean, since obviously since the president uh, has been accused and then t- it's been taken back. He's been accused and it's been taken back that he had sex unprotected with a Stormy porn star. Daniels. Stormy yes, Daniels. Our good friend. Just what was she thinking? While Melania was like raising Baron, like a five month old nursing Baron. Um, she, it seems like Melania's not into it that much anymore. And Shocking. if you notice, she, she made her statement last night when she came out in that virgin white, that pure um, white pantsuit. Oh, at the like, State of the Union? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Th- that that, that was a clear jets. message. Yes, mm-hmm. like, I am a victim. I am, the, yes, mm-hmm. I am the white White nun. Mm-hmm. I am the yeah. Would it have been more of a statement if she hadn't shown up at all? Well, I don't think that could, that would be possible. Oh. I don't. Th- I don't. Well, they think have her double too, so that they would just, exactly. they would just have the double there. <laughs> Maybe that was the double last <laughs> night. Um, uh, but I I believe that there is trouble in in Trump plan. There's a great meme about their marriage, just saying that it's another institution that Donald Trump has <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> could she bring him down? You know, would that no? Turn it, it's people? not going to happen. She's she literally is not allowed to. Do Divorce him until after they. I bet if she divorces him, they'll divorce until her. after they what? Until after until after he. What do you mean not allowed? He's out of 24, office. 24, 24, You don't you don't think that Mitch McConnell has a gun to her head right now saying if you leave that that, that, that you're you know she. I hear what you're saying. I mean, what do Republicans win by staying, though? I mean, sh- if she leaves, um, I'm sure she, you know, could get a couple hundred mil a week of, out of the out of the year at Mar-a-Lago. She signed some, some really serious prenup, to, and, and I mean, there was there's there's lots of legal documents that she signed that he she just legally cannot leave him. I know. Okay, it. gladiators. I'm gonna put on my Kerry Washington scandal hat, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that this is the perfect time. For her to leave because she couldn't leave him if she wasn't in the public eye so mm-hmm. abruptly they mm-hmm. would like have her die in a plane or something that's but she true. should come that's out I, I, that's what i think is going to happen <sighs> i i don't think i i literally oh, don't dark. think the, the Repo- republicans are so terrifying and they, they they're so structured and this is how it's got to be and we are sti- sticking to this regardless and you know whether or not you love each other whether or not you're fighting whatever you are going to stay with him what do they by to, god what do they have to gain by her staying because it, it's the institution of marriage which is Everything that the Republicans are, it's all a facade, and that's all they care about. Like a few weeks ago, you kind of indulged me in my fantasy as as Oprah as president. Just indulge me with the idea of Milani becoming the new Rose McGowan, the Time's Up Mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking it anymore. No, what would happen is she would become what Jackie Kennedy, what happened to Jackie Kennedy after she married Aristotle Onassis, and she became the most hated woman in the world for for deflowering the memory of John Kennedy. That I think is true. And I I think that she would. 
would, I think, I think the, the evangelicals, I think the would Republicans smear her. would, would t- thirty six percent. She would of the be country. No, no, no. but she would, but the Republicans would stand behind Trump, and she would be on an island she somewhere. She would be deported. Yeah. I think she'd be got rid of. Yeah, I think. I think this is her smeared. moment, Melania. I know you're she listening. Has to, yes, Melania, mm-hmm. flee, mm-hmm. come to us, mm-hmm. come. We'll put you on Drag Race, permanent judge. <laughs> Right. You'll, be, you'll be on television every week. <laughs> Wait, we'll, we'll, we'll put you on Rolling the Great, Rolling the Drag Queens. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can have your own Wow Presents Plus series. <laughs> <laughs> Only three ninety nine a month. Yeah. Yeah. Less than the cost of a latte. But so much more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be latte to the party. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> What's our I res- love this show. <laughs> we have to reveal our resistor. We never get <laughs> Tom <laughs> crying. <laughs> our resistor of the week. Who's our res- It was going to be Stormy Daniels, but what is? What the fuck is going on with the Stormy she's, Daniels? She's get, uh, trying to get a book deal right now. Is what's happening. I she's, was. She's, read, she's like, yeah. She's trying to get. The, she's up in the price, so she's going back and forth on the story to try and create yesterday, interest. Yesterday, she said, or a couple of days ago, she said it was all a lie. Well, Even the, though she yeah, done the, a lie. There were different right? signatures. I don't know if you saw the BuzzFeed thing. But then last night, or three nights ago, uh, she went on uh, Jimmy Kimmel and said that that was all a lie and that she really did have sex with him. So she's, like I said, I think she's negotiating right well, now. So she's right. off the and list. On Megyn Kelly, she didn't. On Kimmel, she did. Yes. On John Oliver, she, she might have. Can she say the words, though? I thought she just insinuated that she... Oh, yeah, there, there's saying. a bit of that. I think there's some NDRs mm-hmm. there. Or some, but I, I say, think... Oh, yeah. uh, yes. The well, resist- I, was, I was moving on. but The but resistor you- of the week is The First Purge. That is the new episode of the Purge franchise. Mm. It's going to be released July 4th. And during the State of the Union, they had an ad for the movie, Wait, The First oh, Purge. No, so this is a not. Genesis story. Wait, what, where are you it's watching a red it? hat. Uh-huh. It's a red hat with The First no. Purge. Very controversial. And it's like dawn in America, you know, all that sort of schlock. And then this red hat says so much because that's kind of where we are at in reality. We're on the verge of this kind of... Of the purge. We're on the verge of the purge. Rea- You're familiar with the story. On the verge of the oh, purge. Well, I, you know, each, each purge actually gets better than the one yes, before. It's purge election. It's, oh it's my so God. interesting. This is a horror franchise? Yes. yes. It's oh, very so stu- sorry. Yes, it's, okay. it's, it's one so night of the year, every year, oh, right. everyone is allowed to commit whatever crime. The emergency service is shut down. It's a horror film. It's a horror series from Blumhouse. And it's a very thin the premise right. that they've managed yes. to stretch in. Very right. strangly, they... It, each episode or each uh, one gets better and better. But I do have to say, I would argue because I just have to put out there that I think the resistor of the week is uh, 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 Joe Kennedy the third, who gave the rebuttal to the State of the Union speech, <laughs> and he was just that. He was a ginger prince. He mm-hmm. was just he was hot. He was well spoken. <laughs> he he had that voice of a generation feeling to him. He was energetic. He was young. He was a millennial. And by God, he's tw- Joe Kennedy t- 2020 with Kamala Harris. That's my my mm. pick for president. All right. What is the, where does this leave First Oprah and RuPaul? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Jeffrey Bauer, for coming on our show. Thank Jeffrey you Bauer for Chapman. having me. It's been a pleasure. JBC. Any day, any time. You are so good. It's yeah. lovely. A pleasure. Now we know that if, if any of us are gone, we can, yeah, we can yeah, sit yeah, there. You're in charge. I'm by the way, we're here at this time every week. So you can just come up through the window. on by. Hollywood Boulevard. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Hot jump from my house. And I just have to tell you all, you know, watch RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Series Three Thursdays, 8 p.m. on VH1. And the next yes. Thursday. Yes, yes, this coming Thursday. You, the Bitchula. It is maybe the best challenge we've ever done. Oh, I said it. wow. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was it's quite comedy, possibly the best magic. day of my life. Wow. He's funny. Ten seasons right. in He's funny. And the Queens kill it. it. I'll take it. Drag Thank on you. LA is coming May 11th to 13th. Tickets available now. Trixie and Katja show. Wednesdays, 1030, Viceland. Yes, if you want to support drag queens on television, Would other you? than just on RuPaul's Drag Race, yeah. DVR, watch Viceland, 1030 on Wednesdays. It's real mm-hmm. good. All sign up for wowpresents.com, which is our streaming service. As we just explained, it's only three ninety nine a month. Unsubscribed. Mm-hmm. You should wow too. Presents Plus. It's got more. Thank you. Yeah. I left out the plus. It's got more pop than popcorn. <laughs> more <laughs> corn? I don't remember eating corn. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and on that note. All right, same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow!